next guest have a passion for hockey and now organize an event that is fun and slightly competitive, but also dedicated to giving back to the hockey community. Please welcome Max McCutcheon and Danny Perez. And thank you all for joining us today. Can you all kind of describe the, the unique blend of in-person and online engagement that the Colorado Cup offers to sponsors and how this combo maximizes brand visibility? Yeah, for sure. And thanks for having us. Um, we're, we're really proud of the in-person product that we've put on. Um, the true goal of Colorado Cup is to put an environment together that pulls the kid out of everyone. Um, there's an adult, there's adult players that sign up and also the spectators, whether they're friends and family of, of the players or they're folks in the community that are just looking for something fun and unique to do. Um, but we, we've enjoyed success, uh, partnering with businesses that offer cool and unique services, products that the community really sees a need for. Um, some of our partners that have succeeded the most have also been able to engage with our audience, whether it's like a cool tent or a prop. Um, we've had one of our sponsors actually bring a UTV to the rink, so that was really fun. Um, and uh, as for the online presence, um, we've exploded in our social media growth. Um, through our video and media team. Uh, we started two years ago and now we're over 8,000 followers on Instagram, uh, which is awesome. Um, however, we've uh, utilized that, we've built that through utilizing strategic partnerships across North America to drive traffic um, mainly from the US and Canada, but also overseas. Um, so, yeah. So, tell me who came up with the Colorado Cup? Whose idea was this? This was all, both of ours. Um, we, I mean, there's. Mac, I think Max kind of presented it to me. Max had this kind of idea rumbling like in his mind for a bit. And um, we were just kind of hanging out one day and he brought up to me and just kind of said, Hey, I got thinking about like, you know, doing this event. You know, he was playing men's league kind of heavily and um, I haven't played men's league at all. And he was like, I go to some of these events and it's just like not that great of a product. And obviously, all of us come from a hockey background. So um, he was like, I feel like we could do something better. And, it just kind of came to fruition from there. So I'd say Max kind of spearheaded the initial conversation, but kind of took off from there. Yeah. So, and, so do you all have a specific demo or a target audience that the Colorado Cup attracts? Yeah. Um, our The great thing about the Colorado Cup is um, our demographic is fairly general. Um, it stretches not only to hockey players, um, but it's fairly general demographic uh, per se. As far as geography goes, 78% uh, of our audience is from the United States, 13% from Canada, 3% um, from France, and 2% from Spain, which is kind of funny just because it's a roller hockey based uh, tournament. Um, but as far as cities goes, uh, it's Colorado heavy, 5% uh, in Colorado Springs, and then 2% in Denver. Um, and then the remaining is just sporadic all over the place. Um, so, yeah. And as far as age ranges go, 37% um, is between 25 and 35 years old, which is pretty common for adult um, sporting events. Um, but we also have a good mix. 31% are 18 to 24, so just a little bit younger. And then 17% uh, 35 to 44 years old. Did so I, it's awesome. Did I good hear spread. you right? Did I hear you right? Roller hockey? We're not talking ice hockey here? Yeah, well, we do have a number of, uh, we have a, two different types of events. So we call ourselves a roller ho uh, hockey series. So we have our roller hockey series, which is most popular, um, which is drives the European uh, attention. Um, but we also have ice as well. But um, our roller hockey is the most popular for sure. So. Absolutely. You, you probably get even more people because they're not as scared to, to be on the ice. But I guess you do have to balance out that whole wheel thing. What are some uh, successful examples of past sponsorships with the Colorado Cup? So from the inception of the Colorado Cup, we've partnered with a company called DiscountFlies.com. Um, and the way that we kind of figured that one was, well, we're in Colorado. People love to come out here. Either they move here to go fishing or be in the outdoors, or they're already from here and live here. And that's kind of part of the activities that they do. So, um, you know, just kind of through my network in hockey, um, the discount flies opportunity kind of came, came about and they've been at the forefront as a premier sponsor. So for them, it's been great because they've been able to put stuff in goodie bags for all the players. 
um, you know, give free, um, you know, items for us to raffle off and have them as a premier sponsor of our event. So, you know, they've been plastered all over, all over our events on banners and um, in the championship, you know, photos and things like that. They're at the forefront. So they've also been able to come to the event since they are local while, while they are an online marketplace and an online presence with discountflies.com. If you're a fly fisherman and on there, you don't really know they're from Colorado, but the great part about our event being here in the state of Colorado and them being local as well, they're, they're actually at our event and they're able to show up and, you know, shake hands, meet people. So it's been great for them to get that in-person presence while also having that online marketplace and still kind of be involved. And, um, you know, one of the owners, his kid plays hockey. So, you know, he's been able to come to the events and, and things of that nature. So um, just finding ways to get creative, to get them involved as, as much as they want to be and as much as they're willing to be as well. What about flexibility on sponsorship packages? Do you have availability for different size budgets and different size businesses? Yeah. So our top one is the premier sponsorship, which um, is $10,000. For for example, we have our you know different tiers under that, but you know, that's our big one. Um, if there's a company that wants to get involved with us, and they want to get creative and we want to all sit down and say okay well what works for you and how involved do you want to be what's kind of the level of involvement that you're willing to be a part of this great we'll sit down and have a conversation and tailor something to them um you know so that way everybody wins we you know while we do have kind of our you know things that we want to you know meet um and different kind of tiers that we have set we are willing to be flexible because we want this to be a win-win for everyone involved. We want as much brand vis uh, visibility. Um, you know, it helps us with uh, having people supporting what we're doing too. So, you know, we're not overly strict. We're willing to be flexible and, and that's been great. And you were saying that your fans can experience not only being at the event, but they can also experience it through online platforms. How does this enhance the overall fan experience? Pretty much with our event, um, some of the things for our in-person event is, especially with our roller one, it's growing in that regard as far as the presence of roller hockey in the state of Colorado. Coming from an ice background, how many people played roller? Um, or if you did, it was kind of like, hey, be careful, you're going to build bad habits. But we want, I think hockey's hockey, and that's why we're doing this. We both come from ice backgrounds. It's all the same to us. Yeah, one has wheels and one has a blade, but at the end of the day, it's getting kids out there. So we want to make it a fun in-person experience. And some of the things that we've done is added music, um, team announcements, player announcements, um, turning the lights off for all the pro games that we have at our events. So little things like that kind of allow fans to show up and make it feel like they're at an NHL game or a quote unquote legitimate hockey game. Um, you know, there's some other events that do that, but not really. It's kind of far and few between. So kind of giving it that taste of ice hockey and that professional feel, um, adding that kind of really enhances our brand experience, gets a lot of people in the seats at the event, people who are walking around, they see, oh, what's this? What's the commotion? What's the noise? What's the lights turning off? And now they're going from walking around at other parts of the facility to meandering over to our end. Now you might spark a kid to say, dad, what is this? Oh, it's roller hockey or you know, someone who, you know, wants to get engaged and they see our, um, you know, our brand sponsorships. It's just getting that visibility through different kind of ways. And with the online presence this has allowed us to kind of post a lot of content on social media that people are reaching out to us and DMing us or our friends are asking us, what'd you guys do? You guys turn the lights off at the game. It just kind of creates that buzz that we're able to now put as, you know, into content post on our social media and, you know, you see the brands in the background, all, all that sort of stuff. It's that full production instead of just like a come play, get your goodie bag and leave. Yeah. And I think I'd probably also add on like that adds uh, value to the sponsors as well. Um, we've, we've partnered with strategic partners that I've mentioned. Um, and that number is going to grow and we actually have a plan that could get us in, in front of 6.5 million million accounts across all our social media platforms. Um, so this type of viewership um, for the sponsorship costs that we're charging are, is is really unheard of in the industry, and it leads to significant ROI for our sponsors. So um, it's it's a mix of creating an awesome in person experience just for our fans, uh, it, all, or not our fans, but just hockey fans in general. Um, 
And then also it creates really good content for our online marketing. And then mm -hmm. in turn drives ROI for, for our sponsors. So a um, little unique, um, unique concept, but it's, uh, it's, it's going really well. It, it sounds like you are getting more and more people interested in not only ice hockey, but also roller hockey, and it's a team sport, so I love that. If folks want more information on how to get in touch with y'all, perhaps they want to sponsor an event, how do they do that? Uh, they, they can contact us. Um, Instagram is the best best uh, <laughs> contact method for us, um, okay. at Colorado Cup. Uh, it's just at colorado.cup actually. Um, but if you just Google search Colorado cup, we'll pop up. So that's all right. Instagram has been great. Sorry. Yeah. Um, just because you can just DM us and all of us are on the account. So um, we always see something and immediately respond. So that's the you know best way and most interactive. Well, thank y'all both so much for sharing your story. We really appreciate it. Danny and Max today. Thank you. Thank for you. Us. Yeah. Appreciate that.